So in the previous video, we have added our player and we are moving the player, but the player is getting out of bounds, which is something that we don't want. And by the way, I've noticed that I added a box collider to the player. So now I've just replaced it with a circle collider. So add component, circle collider and hit enter. And I remove the box collider by clicking on the gear and remove component and it will remove that component and then simply add the circle collider to it and set, this, set it to be a trigger. Now, as I said, our player is getting out of bounds and we don't want that. We're going to fix it with a script. So here I'm going to create a new C-sharp script, which I'm going to name player bounds. And I am going to attach it on the player. Now, before you say anything like, okay, why well, we are not adding player bounds in the player movement script. I'm so confused. What are you doing? Well, in Unity, it is better to create a separate script for every separate task that you want. That's how Unity prefers to have scripts. So we have the player movement script, which is going to move the player. That script is, well, moving the player and, uh, the other script, player bounce, is gonna, well, strict the player. So bounce and movement are two separate things. For that, we have two separate scripts. This is the preferred way Unity likes it. So now going here in the player bounce, I can simply first tag the class, which I am always, well, doing, give a little bit of space. And what we wanna do is, here we need to create a private float min x comma max x and what is this or this syntax here well i typed here comma then i type max x well this right here is the same as if we were to type private float max x here and above we have min x something like this so here we have min x here we have max x but a shortcut for this to write it on a single line is like this simply type comma and this max x variable is going to be a type of float and well, it's gonna be another separate variable. So here we have actually two variables. One is called min x and another one is called max x. So what's the idea that we want to do? Well, notice here, if we go back, now we are in the scene editor and this right here, these cubes that you see, this right here, everything in the scene editor is called unity world. These are, this is the unity world. And here the units are measured in unity world points. If we go here on the game where we have the screen, this right here is called screen world. So here the, well, coordinates are measured in screen coordinates. This is why when we go here and notice the main camera, if we set the camera's position to one on the X axis, notice where the camera is going to go. So camera went here. But what is my point here? Well, we set the camera to one, meaning one unity point to the right side. If we were to set the camera in the world point here, we would need to do something like setting its position to, I don't know, for example, because this is 480 by 800, we will need to set it at, I don't know, 600 on the X and it will move it because these are screen coordinates. They are calculated by pixels. So here, Coordinates are calculated by pixels and here coordinates are calculated by unity world points and we can convert unity world points to screen coordinates and screen coordinates to unity world points and stuff like that. So this is precisely what we are going to do in our start function. So we're going to say here vector tree and I'm going to type here coor short for coordinates is equal to camera. So camera dot main dot screen to world point. What this actually means? Well, screen to world point is actually going to convert the screen coordinates, which are in pixels to unity world point coordinates. And now we need to pass the screen coordinates. We know that our width and height are 480 by 800. So we know because we set that up, but it could happen that our game, well, it not could happen, it is gonna, it is gonna happen 100% that our game is gonna run on a device that's HD. So for example, 1280 by 8 by 720 or full HD 920 by 1080 and stuff like that. So what we can do is we can simply type here screen 
that width which will get us the width of the screen and screen that height which will get us the height of the screen and zero here for the z-axis because we do not care about the z-axis screen width and screen height is going to give us the width and the height of the screen of the device where our game is currently being played so now we are going to convert the width and the height of our screen in our let me just go back yeah it's here in our case it's 480 by 800 so 480 by 800 is the screen width and height so now we have that converted into unity world points and now what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna say min x is equal to negative of the coordinate x plus 0.3f and max x is equal to coordinate x dot x minus 0.3f now you're wondering why am i subtracting and adding 0.3 well we will see in a second and here in the update function i'm simply going to say vector 3 temp for temporary position is equal to transform that position meaning the current position of our player and we are going to test if temp dot x is greater than max x so if our temp x meaning our current x position is greater than the maximum x position where we can go we're going to say temp.x is equal to max x and below we are going to say if temp.x is less than the min x then we are going to say temp.x is equal to min x and lastly we're going to say transform that position is equal to temporary variable now what we are doing here well, first things first, here we are getting the current position of our player. So this is the current position of the player. We are storing that in the temporary position variable that we have created. Here we are testing. If our current X position is greater than the max X position that we defined here. So this is the maximum position up to which we can go. And if our current position is greater than that position, we are simply going to assign our current position to be equal to the max position, not allowing us to go above the max x. And we are doing the same thing for the minimum. So we are testing if our current x is less than the minimum x, then our current x is equal to the minimum x, meaning it will not allow it to go below the minimum x position, which we defined here. And after that, we are simply going to reset our position back. So let's test it out. If I go here and uh, hit the run button, if I try to go out, notice I'm holding and I'm holding the arrows and I'm holding the keyboard, but I'm not gonna go outside of this bounds. Again here, not going out of bounds. So can't go, not allowing to go out of bounds. Now let's get back to this right here. Why am I adding here 0 0.3 and subtracting here 0 0.3? Well, notice now, if I go on the right side, notice where my player is. So it's up to here, right near the edge. But if I remove this, so if I remove this and this from here, so I'm not subtracting, I'm not adding 0 0.3, notice where our player is going to be. So notice now half of his face is not visible because he is a little bit out of, so his half is out of bounds. So notice here his half is out of bounds. We don't want that. We want the player to be visible. So we want him to be around here and not allowing him to go out of bounds. That's why I've subtracted here and added here, well, 0 0.3, just so that I give a little bit more space so that the player will not go, his second half will not go out of bounds. So notice now, if I go back, notice he is visible, he is whole, but he is in the game. His other half is also in the game and it is visible. So this is why I added and subtracted 0 0.3. Now, we can also go, for example, here in our scene and we can do something like this. If I take the player, a player and I can position him here for example and see the bounce so I can see here the bounce is negative 2.05 
and if I go here, here is positive 0 0.2.5 and I can hardcore these values so I can go, not 20, 0, so I can go back here and for the min x and max x I can simply type negative 0 0.05 and for the max x 2.05 and it will still work. So if I remove this from here and I simply go and I type min x is equal to negative 2 0.05 f and max x is equal to 2.05 f. This will still work. So here we are setting hard coding these values because we saw their values here in the inspector panel. Notice now if I run the game it will still work. Notice we are not allowing our player to go out of bounds. So this will also work. This is another way that we can use to well, strict our player between some bounds. But since we did it like this, I'm gonna leave it and uh, that's that. So we are done for this video, stricting the player's bounds and whatnot. In the next video, what we are gonna see is we are gonna create our obstacles and our collectible items and make them fall above and see how we can actually do that with the, with the help of colliders, which is an inter interesting approach. So stay tuned for that and I will see you guys in the next video.